On the last episode of the History of UT's protests, we dived into Texas athletics and some of the athletes who came out with Alyssa demands. The university responded to some of those demands which was met with both criticism and satisfaction from fans, students, and alumni. Continuing part two, we're going to dive into the ties Texas Athletics has with UT protests and social justice. So if you haven't watched the first episode, I suggest you click out right now and go check it out. Demands isn't something new. The Afro-Americans for Black Liberation was a radical organization that helped fight for changes on college campuses back in the 1960s. Similar to the demands of UT football players, in 1969, AABL, along with Black students, had a list of demands for then-president Norman Hackerman. It was groups like AABL that helped pave the way for UT Black students. So what does this have to do with athletes? Well, this change at UT led the Southwest Regional Conference to permit black students to participate in all athletic activities. However, this wasn't the end of advocacy for athletes. After the Negro Association for Progress, NAP, was formed in 1966, it called for many more changes to be made across campus. In 1967, NAP met with then-head football coach Daryl K. Royal to discuss the lack of recruitment of black athletes. While it took a while for Texas athletics to desegregate, someone accidentally did it for them. According to a feature by KUT, in 1956, a black university Southern California fullback by the name of Leon Holland played in a game. football had its first lettered black player, Julius Whittier. Today, students continue to fight for equality and changes on campus. With heightened police brutality across the world, black students have continued to find a space on campus. 